Sabina Flight 548 was a Boeing 707-329 aircraft that crashed en route from New York City to Brussels, Belgium, on February 15, 1961. The flight, which had originated at Idlewild International Airport, now John F. Kennedy International Airport, crashed on approach to Zavontum Airport, Brussels, killing all 72 people on board and one person on the ground. The fatalities included the entire U.S. figure skating team, who were traveling to the World Figure Skating Championships in Prague, Czechoslovakia. Despite a thorough investigation, the precise cause of the crash remains a mystery. The most likely explanation was thought to be a failure of the tail stabilizer adjusting mechanism. This was the first fatal accident involving a Boeing 707 in regular passenger service. It happened just 28 months after the 707 airliner was placed into commercial use. It remains the deadliest plane crash ever to occur on Belgian soil. Topic: <inaudible> Accident. There were 11 crew members on board the ill-fated flight. The two pilots, Louis Lambrechts and Jean Roy, were both experienced ex-army pilots. There were no difficulties reported during the seven and a half hour transatlantic flight from New York. There was no indication that the plane was in any particular trouble, although the flight crew did lose radio contact with Brussels Airport about 20 minutes before coming into land, under clear skies, at about 10 o'clock Brussels time, CET, 9 o'clock Coordinated Universal Time. The Boeing 707 was on a long approach to runway 20 when, near the runway threshold and at a height of 900 feet, 270 meters, power was increased and the landing gear retracted. The airplane had been forced to cancel its final approach to Brussels Airport, as a small plane had not yet cleared the runway. The 707 circled the airport and made another attempt to land on adjoining runway 25, which was not operational. This second approach was also aborted. It became clear to observers that the pilots were fighting for control of the aircraft, making a desperate attempt to land despite the fact that a mechanical malfunction was preventing them from making a normal landing. The plane circled the airfield three times altogether, during which the bank angle gradually increased until the aircraft had climbed to 1,500 feet 460 meters and was in a near-vertical bank. It then leveled its wings, pitched up abruptly, lost speed and spiraled rapidly nose down, plunging into the ground less than 2 miles 3 kilometers from the airport, at 10.05 Central Europe Time, 9.05 Coordinated Universal Time. The location of the crash was a marshy area adjacent to farmland near Berg then an independent hamlet, nowadays part of Kampenhout, 4 miles northeast of Brussels. Eyewitnesses said that the plane exploded when it hit the ground and heavy black smoke was seen coming from the wreckage which had burst into flames. Theo Delat, a young farmer and noted amateur cyclist, who was working in a field near to the crash site, was killed by a piece of aluminum shrapnel from the plane. Another field worker, Marcel Lowers, was also hit by flying debris which amputated part of his leg. Father Joseph Cuyt, a local priest who had been observing the airplane as it came into land, rushed to the scene but was driven back by the intense heat of the fire. Airport rescue vehicles arrived at the crash site almost immediately but the plane was already a blazing bonfire. It is believed that all 72 occupants of the plane were killed instantly on impact. Boudoir I, King of the Belgians, and his consort, Queen Fabiola, travelled to the scene of the disaster to provide comfort to the bereaved families. They donated oak coffins bearing the royal seal to transport the bodies back home. <laughs> <laughs> Loss of U.S. figure skating team All 18 members of the 1961 U.S. figure skating team lost their lives, as well as 16 other people who were accompanying them, including family members, professional coaches, and skating officials. Among the fatalities were nine times U.S. ladies champion, turn coach, Mary Bell Vincent Owen and her two daughters, reigning U.S. ladies champion Lawrence Owen, aged 16, and her 20-year-old sister, reigning U.S. pairs champion Mary Bell Owen, both of whom had won gold medals at the 1961 U.S. figure skating championships in Colorado Springs just two weeks earlier. Lawrence Owen was the cover story for the February 13th issue of Sports Illustrated, just two days before her untimely death. Mary Bell Owens pairs champion partner Dudley Dud 
Richards and reigning U.S. men's champion Bradley Lord were also killed, along with U.S. ice dance champions Diane D.D. Sherbloom and Larry Pierce. The team also lost U.S. men's silver medalist Gregory Kelly, U.S. ladies' silver medalist Stephanie Steffi Westerfeld, and U.S. ladies' bronze medalist Rode Lee Mickelson. Despite the fact that some national teams had already arrived in Prague for the World Championships, which were scheduled to start on February 22. The devastating loss of the U.S. team forced the event to be cancelled. The competition organizers in Prague initially confirmed that the event would go ahead, but the International Skating Union conducted a poll to agree on the most appropriate course of action. The vote, which took place on February 16, went in favor of cancellation out of respect for the U.S. team. A telegram was sent from ISU headquarters which read, in view of the tragic death of 44 sick American skaters and officials the 1961 World Championship will not be held." Prague was given the chance to host the event the following year. <laughs> <laughs> Aftermath The figure skating team was mourned across the U.S. and all of the national newspapers carried the story on their front pages. In office for less than a month, President John F. Kennedy issued a statement of condolence from the White House, which read, Our country has sustained a great loss of talent and grace which had brought pleasure to people all over the world. Mrs. Kennedy and I extend our deepest sympathy to the families and friends of all the passengers and crew who died in this crash. He was particularly affected by the tragedy. Pairs skater Dudley Richards was a personal friend of the president and his brother Ted, and they had spent summers together in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. The disaster struck a severe blow to the U.S. figure skating program, which had dominated the sport throughout the 1950s. Frank Shumway, who had only very recently become vice president of U.S. figure skating, predicted that it would take up to four years for the U.S. to regain its world prominence in the sport. Barbara Rolls, the 1960 Olympic bronze medalist, felt obligated to come out of retirement, and won a gold medal at the 1962 U.S. Championships less than eight months after giving birth to her first child. At the same time, some of the younger American figure skaters progressed more quickly due to the lack of senior skaters competing in the field. Scott Allen won a silver medal at the 1962 U.S. Championships when he was just 12 years old, and then won bronze at the 1964 Winter Olympics the week of his 15th birthday, becoming one of the youngest Olympic medalists in history. It was not until 1965 that the U.S. would start to win medals at the World Championships again, and the U.S. would not regain international prominence in figure skating until the 1968 Winter Olympics when Peggy Fleming won gold in the ladies' event and Tim Wood won silver in the men's. As the fatalities included many top American coaches as well as the skating team, the tragedy was also indirectly responsible for bringing foreign coaches to the U.S. to fill the vacuum that was left behind. U.S. figure skating team coach, William Kipp, who was one of those who died on the Brussels flight, was eventually replaced by British former world champion pairs skater John Nix in the fall of 1961. Italian world bronze medalist Carlo Fassi was another international coach who relocated from overseas to help rebuild the U.S. figure skating program. The disaster prompted U.S. figure skating executives to issue a mandate that still applies today no team traveling to an international competition would ever be allowed to fly together again. Investigation <inaudible> 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 The Belgian government immediately ordered a full inquiry into the cause of the accident, and an investigation was conducted by the Belgian national authorities, the United States Federal Aviation Administration FAA, and the International Civil Aviation Organization ICAO, who spent several months combing through the evidence. There was much speculation about what may have happened, the FBI even reportedly considered the possibility of terrorism, the exact cause of the crash was never fully determined, but the authorities eventually agreed that the most likely explanation was a mechanical failure of one of the flight control mechanisms, probably a malfunction of either the wing spoilers or the tail stabilizers. Although there was insufficient evidence to prove beyond reasonable doubt which of the flight systems had malfunctioned, the FAA were of the opinion that the tail stabilizer adjusting mechanism had failed, allowing the stabilizer to run to the 10.5-day nose-up position. Topic: 
Topic: Notable victims. There were 34 members of the US figure skating delegation on board the fatal flight. Almost half the plane's occupants all heading for the 1961 World Figure Skating Championships in Prague. The 18 figure skaters were accompanied by six coaches, the team manager, two judges, one referee, and six family members. The notable victims are listed below. Ladies Rodé Lee Mickelson, age 17, 1961 U.S. bronze medalist. Lawrence Rashawn Owen, age 16, 1961 U.S. and North American champion, 1960 Olympic and World Team member. Stephanie Westerfeld, age 17, 1961 U.S. silver medalist. Meng Gregory Kelly, age 16, 1961 U.S. silver medalist, 1961 North American bronze medalist, 1960 World Team member. Bradley Lord, age 21, 1961 U.S. champion, 1961 North American silver medalist, 1959 World Team member. Douglas Ramsey, age 16, 1961 U.S. Championships fourth place medalist pairs skater Silla Ray Hadley, age 18, Ray Ellis Hadley Jr., age 17, 1960 Olympic and World Team members, 1961 U.S. pairs silver medalists. Laurie Jean Hickox, age 15, William Holmes Hickox, age 19, 1961 U.S. pairs bronze medalists. Maribel Yersha Owen, age 20, Dudley Shaw Richards, age 29, 1960 Olympic team members, 1961 U.S. pairs champions, 1961 North American silver medalist size dancers donor Lee Carrier, age 20, Roger Campbell, age 19, 1961 U.S. and North American silver medalists. Patricia Major Deneen, age 24, Robert Deneen, age 23, 1961 U.S. bronze medalists. Diane Carroll Sherbloom, age 18, Larry Pierce, age 24, 1961 U.S. champions coaches Daniel Ryan, Edward Scolden, Maribel Yersha Vinson Owen, Judge Sherald Hartshorn, Edward Lamary Othersu, S. Team manager Dean McMinn, referee Walter S. Powell. Topic Legacy. Within days of the tragedy, the U.S. Figure Skating Executive Committee established the 1961 U.S. Figure Skating Memorial Fund, to honor the 18 team members and their entourage who lost their lives on Sabina Flight 548. The mission of the Memorial Fund was to help rebuild the U.S. figure skating program, by providing financial support to promising young figure skaters to enable them to pursue their goals and develop their full potential. In March 1961, a benefit was held in the Boston Garden Arena to raise money for the Memorial Fund. Over the years, thousands of young U.S. skaters have benefited from the fund which has continued to grow and prosper. One of the first beneficiaries was 12-year-old Peggy Fleming, whose coach William Kipp had died in the plane crash. Fleming became a symbol of the rebirth of U.S. figure skating when she went on to win gold at the 1968 Winter Olympics. In January 2011, the 1961 U.S. figure skating team were inducted into the U.S. Skating Hall of Fame in a special ceremony at the 2011 U.S. Figure Skating Championships in Greensboro, North Carolina. All 18 team members were inducted, along with the six professional coaches that were accompanying them on the flight, Linda Hadley, William Kipp, Mary Bell Vincent Owen, Daniel Ryan, Edie Scolden, and William Swallander. In 2009, U.S. Figure Skating commissioned the production of a full-length feature documentary film called Rise, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the loss of the 1961 figure skating team. The film was produced and directed by the Emmy Award-winning company Lookalike Productions, of Englewood, New Jersey. Rise was shown in theaters across the U.S. for one night only, on February 17, 2011, with one encore presentation on March 7, 2011. Proceeds from the movie were donated to the U.S. Figure Skating Memorial Fund. The film was shown on the Versus Network on October 22, 2011. Vincent Owen Elementary School, in Winchester, Massachusetts, is named in honor of Mary Bell Vincent Owen and her two daughters who died in the accident. It ranks consistently among the top schools in Greater Boston. The 40th anniversary of the crash was marked by the unveiling of a five foot high stone monument in Berg Kampenhout, close to the scene of the tragedy. Local dignitaries attended the unveiling ceremony, which took place on February 10, 2001. Uh, 
Topic See also List of accidents involving sports teams equals equals notes